Good afternoon. Uh, you're going to have to excuse my voice. My name is Prosper Tarowinga, and I'm hoping you're having a fantastic um, afternoon right about now. The video that you're watching right now um, is being recorded live on Facebook. And if you're catching this part, um, you know, you're going to be watching a replay. So I want you to hit the number two so that we just know the kind of people that we're working with. And it also helps us to tailor our content. And if you're watching this on YouTube, just please leave us a comment. You know, so that we understand who is, um, you know, present and who is actually uh, paying attention. So basically, um, I see Julianne T Tindall has also tuned in. Thank you so much. Hope you had a fantastic long weekend and you also have a fantastic long week. You're going to have to excuse me today. I have a serious bout of the men flu. I was actually working outside and then I caught the disease, but <laughs> I hope I'm not going to transmit it, um, you know, online as we speak. All right. So for those that are watching this show for the first time, I want you to uh, understand that I viscerally believe that if you're running an online business, it has to be profitable and you actually have to enjoy working in that business. And I also believe that um, as an online Excuse me, as an online business person, you should be able to create for and relate to the audience that you're going to be, uh, you know, dealing with. So basically every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around and I take you around, um, you know, the, this four step system that I created that is designed to help you package, brand and market your services so that you have a business that's enjoyable and profitable. And today we're going to be talking a lot more about authority, branding and community, especially the connect phase. We're going to be talking about, um, um, you know, what to do when you're networking and how to actually gain as in G-A-I. NS, um, how to get the gains out of uh, proper proper networking out there. So I see James Windia has just tuned in as well. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, you know for tuning in. I've got a serious cold, but we'll see how um, how we can soldier through. All right. So. I mean, if you if you sort of pay attention to the stuff that I put out, um, you would have noticed that in the morning I put up a status saying that um, all of those people that go to all these networking events or networking, um, you know, activities, um, what time do they actually do the work? All right. So it was met with a lot of, you know, um, friction some people saying oh networking is the business and some people saying oh if you don't have a strategy that follows through with that networking then it's a whole waste of time and i actually concur and believe um you know all of those things that whether you have a strategy or not or whether you have a system or not just going out there and meeting other human beings you've gotta have a plan you know what i mean you gotta know what you're gonna say you gotta know um how to react to them you gotta be paying attention to them you really got to have a positive outlook to life. You really got to be a good listener. You know, you got to be sincere and authentic and, and you've got to follow up. You know what I mean? Because half of the time we always think that people are thinking about us, but they're also just thinking how they can survive, how they um you know, they can put their business out there. And if you're going to be networking, you have to be approachable. Okay. So some of the people that I see that are always frequenting, uh, <clears throat> you know, all these networking events that I get invited to, it's usually the same people. It's usually the same businesses. It's usually the same faces. And it's usually the same people that are complaining in other groups for not having leads. So that's the reason why I put it out there that, you know what I mean? It's not basically who you know it's pretty much what you know that actually makes a big difference if you really want to succeed um in networking i can literally tell you that i hardly ever leave my office i mean it's a little bit sad but the way that I put myself out there, I'm as busy as somebody who physically travels across town or goes all those places networking and still comes back with maybe a bunch of business cards. Oh, no, not really solid, um, you know, not really solid, um, 
you know, connections. Because these are people that we're talking about, you know what I mean? It's not a matter of just seeing somebody and knowing them and hoping that they would understand or anticipate what it is that you've got to talk to them about or what you are about, all right? So that's the reason why I put up that status earlier on. And, um, you know, I really wanted those people that were arguing with me in the morning to be present on this live show so that we can actually have that debate in person, you know. Um, and also later on, I'm going to be talking about uh, the gains system of actually, um, you know, being a good networker where you need to look at your goals and the other person's goals, your accomplishments and the other person's accomplishments because some people really like to talk about themselves but it is in those things that they talk about themselves that you can pick out what their pain is what their um, you know aspirations are and what they might need next all right and then you would also look at their interests to see if if it's not if they're not ready to purchase from you just about now, you might connect with them on another level. And as we all know, people do business with those they know, like, and trust. And also, what other networks are they involved in so that you're not just seen in the one place with them? They can also see you elsewhere. And what skills do they have that you need or skills that you have that they might find useful? So we're going to be talking about all of those things and just really figuring out Are you, if you're networking, are you actually doing it well or are you just going there to be, uh, you know, a, a, a business socialite? Because there's a whole big difference. Some people are actually gaining a lot of business, a lot of referrals, a lot of authority. They're actually connecting and they're branding themselves, um, you know, and um, it's just, yes, and, and, they're, and, they're, and they're creating authority within, you know, their name, their network and, and building loyalty and ambassadors because they are out there actually, you know, kissing babies and actually hugging um, and shaking hands, you know. That's one thing that networking actually does. As it brings you closer to your audience, but are you taking advantage of that? All right. So some people don't quite understand because networking involves talking to other human beings, and 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 uh, it's very difficult these days, um, you know, to actually connect with people because now our interests are all over the place. Our interests, um, you know, it's not like back in the days. Where, you know, if you just had one thing that you were supposed to be doing, that was it. But these days, if you have, you know, some sort of weird interest, you can just type it up on Google. There's probably 20 other people, um, you know, that are able to, um, you know, that are able to, you know, be in that group that you're looking for. So networking can be anything. You can do it for your business. You can do it for you know, getting leads or referrals, whichever way you do it for, um, it should be able to give you some sort of return of investment if it is actually something that you use in your strategy, okay? But many people, you know, including myself, they offer all this advice, um, you know, about what it takes to be better at, at, at networking. And one thing that is often left out of the, the equation, however, is networking involves interacting with other humans, you know? It's, it's one thing that, People think you just show up at an event and, and all you got to do is pass you on your business card and hope that somebody would give you a call just because they've got your card in hand. Um, I've been to events where people have given out so many business cards. They start writing their name and number on other people's business cards that are still at the event. You know what I mean? So it, it really, really has to... Um, be about what are you, what are your, what are your, um, you know, what are your desires? What are the things that you really want to put out there and who do you really need to connect with? Okay. So like I said, networking really involves interacting with other human beings. I see Nicole has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know, do you use networking as a strategy in your marketing? Um, let me know if that's what you do within your business. Will says, do a dab for me. Um, can you explain what, what, what that means? I'm not, I'm not sure what, what that means that right there. So, um, you know, you know, if we want to make the kind of impression that actually works and actually build a powerful sort of maybe personal network, we really, really have to be 
um, you know, intentional about our, our, our reasons for being at that particular networking event. We need to, you know, exceed other people's expectations about us. And we also need to adjust our behavior accordingly. Now, some people think that I am who I am, so I should always act the way I do. But let me tell you something. At the end of the day, it's, it's very difficult for other people to accept you if you're not going to accept who they are as a person. Um, and Bud Trevelyan, can you shut me out? Um, well, I don't know if this is that kind of a show, but what would I say about you? Let me know what it is that you do so that we can see how we can fit you in, uh, you know, to the grand scheme of things. Like, this is the kind of thing you're supposed to be networking, um, you know, with other people. But this is a specific example of somebody who just comes in and says, shout me out. What's in it for me? How, what am I, how do I stand to benefit from that? You know, the whole me, 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 me. Thing is, the, is the reason why networking is, is is making other people fail in their business. So it's one of those things. Um, now, uh, Will Graves, it's like coughing into your elbow, but put your underarm behind. You. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I I believe that if you really want to be um um a good person that networks, you have to be a good listener. You know, um, there's a reason why you've got two ears and one mouth. All right. Top of the list, really, of all the things that you've got to do is to become a really, really good listener. You know, um, you know, our success with interacting with other human beings is we should notice that People always like to be listened to. People always like to be heard. So if you're going to be going out there networking and you're not specifically, um, you know, uh, listening to what other people's interests are or what their hopes and dreams or perceptions are of the event, you probably lost them right there. You know, our success really in, in, in a lot of networking depends on how well we can listen and how well we actually learn. Okay. I see Samantha Riley has just tuned in. Thank you so much. And also we're just really talking about the networking, um, you know, busy bees that are out there. If they're not doing it right, if people are not really, um, you know, listening to what, um, you know, their audience really wants or the person that they're talking to or they're networking to, all of that will be wasted efforts, you know. So, you know, the faster you or somebody you're networking with learn what it is that you need or how you can help each other, the faster you'll be able to establish some sort of a relationship. Have you ever been to some sort of networking event and people ask you what is it that you do and then you go on with a whole big spiel about what you do and some people just go, oh yeah, that's cool. Or they just say, oh, that's fun, you know, and eventually they look around the, the whole room to see if they, um, you know, they can... Um, you know, what do you say, you know, they, they, if they can find somebody, uh, you know, to talk to, that is not you. All right. I'm going to have to get rid of you. Anyway, that, that's pretty cool. So, so basically, you know, if you're going to be going out there networking, have two ears and one mouth for you to understand what people need and how you can be of service to them, you know? And, and if you, are listening to what people need and you're engaged in the conversation and you listen to other people's needs, um, you know, and maybe whatever concerns they might have, you will actually find opportunities that you can um, be able to help him or her. You know, and in many ways, networking is just about connecting the dots. Some people go there to be seen. All right. Some people go there to just go and give other people their business cards or for them to to be counted as having been there. But they're not actually connecting with anybody else who actually makes sense that, um, you know, they need to connect with them. So if you're able to listen and you're able to help people by actually helping them, guess what? Your connections will seek you out. All right. Some people don't quite do that. So being a very good listener, when you go out there and you're really connecting with people, finding out what their problem is, finding out how you can actually solve those problems, especially if your services can enable you to solve them immediately. 
guess what? Every networking, um, you know, event you go to, uh, every networking uh, participation you 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 encounter will actually help you. I see Amanda Holmes has just tuned in and look, Corin, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We're just talking about you know general etiquette around networking and um, how you can actually get a proper return of your investment because you are missing out on work. Every time you leave your house and go and network with other people, you're missing out on activities that could actually be income ge generating. So you might as well make it, you know, worthwhile. And earlier on, I put up a status um, where I was talking about um, how so many people are always seen at these networking events, but they don't seem to be doing much. Or when is it actually that they actually do the work? All right. So half of the things that when you're going to be meeting up with people is literally just having a positive attitude. Um, there's so much happening in the world right now. So many imp uh, entrepreneurs are depressed. So much is, is um, you know, not working out. Um, you know, softwares are becoming more expensive. All of those things. So your attitude really and or how you take things in general, because some people are just there for a laugh. Some people have teams that work behind them, etc., etc. So you really want to make sure that if you are going to be seen in public, you just have a positive attitude. You know, you just have a positive attitude. All right. Look, Moroni, thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry, I've got a <coughs> terrible man flu creeping up on me. I hope I'll be able to do this show without having to... <laughs> run away or something like that so if you're going to be going out and meeting people basically your attitude man um because people will remember those that make them happy or laugh or people that make them feel good do you know what i mean and 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 your outlook on the world because if you go there you start talking about politics you start talking about religion or how you think politics should be run Nobody's going to want to remember you or to be associated with your work or with whatever it is that you do. You know, it's the first thing that people see. You, you, you might not realize that maybe your, 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 your attitude or your, you know, your, your outlook is, is not positive. And people can sniff that a mile away, you know, because a consistently negative attitude makes people dislike you, um, you know, and it actually drives away referrals. Because who would want to do business with somebody who can't take care of themselves, you know? And by contrast, a, a positive attitude, um, you know, makes people want to cooperate and associate with you. Have you ever seen those people that when they're at a networking event, they are the life of the party, you know? It's because they've got a positive attitude around them, you know? And this is why, you know, most um, positive business professionals, they're like magnets you know others really want to be around them because they can't get enough of that positivity so if you're going to be going out to a networking event no matter who you are no matter what you do no matter what your brand is if you don't carry with you a positive attitude it's going to be difficult for anyone to want to associate with you or to mingle with you you know others other people really want to be around um, um you know people that are positive and also send their friends and family to you you know, nobody's going to want to um, send people to a worry what or to a, a, a drama llama, you know, that the person that's always complaining about stuff that really doesn't make sense to be to be there when people, um, you know, are supposed to be either collaborating or, you know, really, really serving others by helping, um, you know, each each individual that you get in touch with. All right. I see Mike James has just tuned in and Alan Wills. Thank you so much, gentlemen for tuning in. Sorry about my voice. I've got a bit of a cold. So let's hope this is gonna, you know, this is gonna come out properly, you know, and I just talked about, you know, collaborating and serving others. It's very easy for people to notice that you are, um, you know, you're a selfish individual or you're not, you're in it for, um, you know, for your own personal gain. You know, whenever you're networking with other people, they really, really need to see that you are doing it for other people. You've got a really strong why that's way out of yourself. You know what I mean? And Nicole says, it is mandatory, I believe, to have um, a natural habit in life and business. All right, cool. Now, if you're collaborating with others, if you're being helpful, if you're out there to serve, 
people don't care how much you actually know until they know how much you absolutely care. You know what I mean? So even if you show up at every networking event, but you don't have that attitude of caring, you don't have that attitude of collaboration, forget it, Mike. If you think people are going to want to do business with you, you know, helping people puts you in, in, in a different you know, text bracket, it puts you, you know, in, 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 into action, into helping others. And people like to see that. All right. Um, people want to network with individuals who have a collaborative attitude. You know, let's say you are at a networking event and some people don't have a place to sit. Guess what happens if you're closer to those people that are standing or whichever way, no matter what your age is, even if you're older or younger, if you don't offer those people a place to sit or do something nice that other people can see from across the room, you know what? People would just associate you with all these bad things. So <clears throat> to all those people that, um, you know, are sometimes, you know, just going out there to network just so that they can be seen, it is, you're actually you know, tainting your chances of actually networking or connecting with other people. Instead, be there to actually serve others, not just for your own benefit. Now, Mike James says, yes, this is true. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Well, absolutely, you know. You, and, and then one other thing is you can help a lot of people in a variety of ways. Maybe you know where the bathroom is. Maybe you know, um, you know, the the, the, the person who's going to be speaking, some people might have questions that they might have. Even if you're not organizing the networking event, people see things from across the room and then people will start finding out who you are, you know? So it's not a matter of just being present at a networking event, be seen helping, be seen doing stuff, you know what I mean? And, you know, even just helping people really, touching someone, you know, and then... And, 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 not, not exactly in those words, but, you know, aiding other people that might not have, um, you know, that might not have, um, you know, the, 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 the capacity to, 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 to understand or grasp what is happening at that networking event. If you're in it for yourself, people can notice that from a mile away. So if you've got a willingness to collaborate, it's very essential because it builds trust. And it actually establishes strong relationships. You're not just there to, um, you know, you know, do a, a, a business card exchange. You're there to create strong relationships, strong partnerships. You know what I mean? So you really need to show up, be sincere and be authentic. Because some of us just go there just because, yes, I read somewhere that networking is good for your business. All right. Um, like I was saying earlier on, you really need to. You know, you can offer to help other people, you know, and some people, if somebody listens to what you're saying, thank them, be very sincere, do exactly the things your mother told you to do when you're in public, you know, even if you're not sincerely interested in the other person, don't show it. Some people are quick to actually, you know, look up and down somebody who comes to a networking event. You never know who is that person is. They might actually be the facilitator or the CEO of a really big company that you're looking to do business with. So never look down upon people, especially when you're out there and just go for those familiar faces that you know, you know, because people who've actually developed successful sort of networking skills, they, they're very sincere in who they are at every turn. It doesn't matter who, what the person looks like or who the person is, you know, and they're authentic in their love and they show it. You know, because that can be seen from across the room and you never know who the next person is looking at that or who just happened to look your way. You know, we've seen people who seemingly are good, um, you know, at networking, but they lack sincerity. You know, everybody who just goes and hey, 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 and then eventually they don't even know who they say hi to. Because faking it is not sustainable, especially these days. You know? Thank you so much, Anthony Kirby, for tuning in. Hope you're having a fantastic day, my man. <clears throat> We're just talking about networking and how, um, you know, other people think showing up at a building where others are networking is networking. You've got to participate. You've got to be involved. You've got to know the people you're talking to, their goals, their aspirations, their interests, what are the networks they're in, the skills that they work around, etc., etc. And the one thing that a lot of people don't do is follow up. 
I've been to many a, a networking places, especially when I'm talking. That's maybe the only reason why I leave the, why I leave, um, you know, the house. And um, half the time, as soon as I finish, I follow up. Because if you offer, you know, opportunities to someone who consistently fails to follow you up, you'll soon, you'll, you'll soon stop wasting your time with that person. How many times have you maybe, you know, set up an appointment with somebody who just doesn't care about following up that connection? They just want to connect when you are at the event, but then nothing else after that. You know, it doesn't matter if your call to action is a simple piece of information, you know. People still need that connection so that they get to know, like, and trust you. You know, so this sh show today, this 30-minute segment is to validate the statement that I put up earlier on. That you're showing up at all these networking events, but are you actually networking? Are you actually putting in the work? Are you actually being trustworthy? Are people actually following up with you? And if you do get the work, what, what time are you doing the actual work? You know? Because fortune lies in the follow-up. <coughs> Not everyone is ready to make a decision there and there when they meet you, you know? You know? And unless somebody tells you, okay, man, stop following me up. You, you definitely have to constantly remind people of who you are. Because then that then proves your trustworthiness. You know, it doesn't matter how successful you might be if you are not trustworthy or no matter who you are, if I don't trust you, I can't work with you. You know, so you need that those people that you're working with or those people that you network with, they give you a good personal reference. And if you're not having a good personal reference, then that's your reputation on the line. You are now just seen as that so socialite that nobody really knows what they do or who they do it for. You know, you must be able to create a referral partner from all the touch points that you're making, especially when you're networking with people, because trust breeds more trust. People do business with those they know, like, and trust, you know, because neither you or anybody else could refer somebody who can be trusted to handle the job well. So every time you're seen out there, people are also questioning your motives. Who then does the work? You know? Who is doing the work if you're seen everywhere all the time? You're seen in all the groups. So you really want to make sure that you're not tainting your reputation by also being, you know, overly available. I mean, it, it might be an oxymoron. Some people might not understand what I'm saying, but at the end of the day, Half of the things is, can you imagine, um, you know, people sometimes also want that which they cannot have. You know, if everybody wants it, some people just don't want it anymore. So you also want to be, you know, careful with your time and how you spend it and who you spend it with. Because just being seen is not, you know, actually going to convert into uh, work or anything else that comes along with it. I see Jordan DeBerno has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my man, for tuning in. But also, you might also find this completely opposite to what I just said. Because you also have to be approachable when you show up at these events. Just because maybe you, you have this ego or you think of yourself as some accomplished um, you know, person with authority. Or you think you're, you're, you've branded yourself enough. You know, People will forget what you said. But they never forget how you make them feel. All right. So effective networking starts with you being approachable. Starts with you being uh, seen in a in in a, in, a, in a way that other people can relate to you. You know. And while this characteristic appears, you know, last in in everything that I'm talking about, everything actually flows from this manner of thought and action. If you are not approachable, then how are people going to? give you recommendations how are people going to refer people to you you know so all of these things that i'm talking about it it, it turns <coughs> it goes into the farming versus hunting aspect of you actually nurturing those leads because you gotta create relationships instead of you just thinking that everyone else can 
or will just jump onto your office just because you met them at a networking event. You know, it's all about building mutually beneficial business relationships. And I see Bersha has just tuned in. How are you going, my man? You know, only then will you succeed in creating a powerful personal network. And I'm African. We've got a statement in Africa. If you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. All right. So most of those things that I've been talking about, yes, you might be showing up and being present at every networking event, but are you actually there? Are you actually making an impact? You know, are people actually noticing your presence? You know? Because there's a whole lot of leadership that is involved in, in getting people to either follow you or follow up on you. You know? Just know what you're good at and work on enhancing those skills. You know? And when you know what you're good at, it's easy for you to know what you're not good at. And then eventually, what you then do is then surround yourself with people that can help you improve those skills. That is the only reason you should be out there networking. Not to be seen or not to show off your new dresses or things like that. All right? There's a lot of people that are just showing up at networking events, but they're not really getting a, a return on investment on whatever it is they're doing there. All right? So for those that were tuning in, thank you so much. This is just... um. You know, uh, 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 what do you call it? An addition to the status that I put up in the morning. And for those people that were arguing, I hope they can watch this and see where I was coming from and see uh, my frame of mind. If you've got any questions regarding this, let me know. Um, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and keep networking, but do it right. Do it in a way that is actually going to give you a return on your investment. Bye for now.